I was a Collins. Why didn't you protect me? Where were you when I was turned into something that even my own father loathed? If his ghost is here with yours, tell him I've come home. I claim this house as mine. And whatever power you or he may have is ended. I am free now and alive. The chains with which he bound me are broken. And I've returned to live the life I never had. Whatever that may turn out to be. What did you think of him? Oh, I don't know. He was... he was polite. Oh, he's very polite. That's what's so odd. Oh, what do you mean? Well, for a minute tonight, when I was alone with him, before you came in, I was afraid of him. Afraid of him? Why? I don't know. Did he say something? Do something? No, he just thanked me for returning his cane. Oh, maybe it was the old house that got to you. You could scare anybody. <laughs> Maybe that's it. There's no reason why I should be scared of Mr. Collins. No reason in the world. What are you going to do to the girl? What makes you think I'm planning to do anything with her? Well, I saw how you looked at her when she was leaving. I know you got something in mind. If I had, it would not be any concern of yours. Why did she come here? I left my cane the coffee shop where she works. She was returning it. You left it on purpose, didn't you? I'm not prepared to answer any more of your questions. You have a job to do. Do it. Not again, not tonight. You must. I can't. You must and you will. Please. I think I'm going to lose my mind. Don't argue with me. Please. Go. Don't look at me that way. I'll go. What time would you like me to pick you up tomorrow? Maggie? What? You look strange. What's, what's wrong? I'm not sure. Maggie, look at me. What's the matter? Have, have you ever had that sensation of being stared at? Like somebody was staring at you and you couldn't see them? Why? I just had that feeling now. Somebody was looking at me. Looking right through me.
night such as this, a night when a young, beautiful woman was pressed to her limits. She could no longer accept what the future held for her. She knew she had to destroy herself before she became something she did not want to be. She had quarreled with her lover. She tried to send him away, but he would not be put off. He tried to put his arms around her, but she broke away from him and ran out into the stormy night. Her white dress contrasted against the darkness. He ran after her as she headed for the one place on earth that seemed to be designed for the termination of life. The rain drenched her. The winds buffeted her, blowing her long hair wildly. Her clothing was torn by the low branches. Her small white feet were bruised and mud-stained by the stony, cruel pathway to the summit of the cliff. The shouts of her lover were lost in the wind as he moved swiftly after her. Near the top, she stumbled over a large rock. Crying hysterically, she limped and crawled to the edge of the precipice. Her lover reached her, clutched at her, spinning her around to face him. Her eyes were wide with terror as the lover held her tightly, his lips pressed against her throat. Soon she grew limp, and he released her. Suddenly, with a, a last surge of energy, she broke free and hurled herself off the cliff. Her scream, reacting and echoing as she plunged downward. Her body was impaled on the large, craggy rocks below. Her lover descended to the bottom of Widow's Hill found her body, broken, lifeless, bloodless. As violent as her death was, the expression on her face was one of serenity, as if this were the best possible ending to her life. I, I don't want to hear any more. Be afraid. This is your room. See? It's just as you left it, as we left it, long, long ago. Nothing has changed. Even we haven't changed. Perhaps you've changed. You're more lovely, my dear Josette, than I remembered. Josette? Yes. From now on, that will be your name. A name of great beauty, and you must take it proudly. It's bestowed on you as the best honor I could pay to a mortal woman. Josette? Yes. In time, you will begin to think like her. Act like her, you will become her. I will become her. That's right. The two of us, we shall experience all the joy that was denied for so many, many years to me and to my lovely Joseph. Joy? Yes, joy, happiness, at last. Last. I've forgiven you. For not you. 
But Josette, she should never have dashed herself on the rocks beneath the cliff. She should never have robbed me of herself. I wanted to give her life, not death. Just as it is life, I will give to you. Life. So you mustn't be afraid. Not life as most men know it, but it is life. And we will live, we will live together, the two of us. Two of us together? Yes. Nothing will separate us ever again. Even you tried to. Even Josette tried to. But you are here, and you are my Josette. Eagle Hill. You must forget all that. Forget the past. We have the future for the first time. Future. And I have something for you. Here in this chest. Come, look at it. See. It survived the years as we have survived. There. Hold it. Take it. Yes. It's a wedding gown. Your wedding gown. Mine? Yours. And someday soon you shall become my bride. Bride? As it was always intended to be. What are those tears? Oh, please, no tears. There mustn't be any tears ever. You're going to be happy here. Wait, I, I have something else for you. I brought this with me back from the Orient. This gift. And I intended to give it to you on a very special day. And that day has come. And this has crossed the seas as I have crossed the centuries. All for your sake. Listen. Do you hear it? This is your music. Listen to it, and the past will fade away to nothing, not, not even a memory. Listen, and you will forget what you have been and yearn for only what you are now. Listen, and all fears, all loneliness, all unhappiness will disappear forever. Listen. Listen. 